you are watching the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me, as always, halfway across the world, Jared Morgan. Hello. How are you going? Uh, well, yeah, I'm going. <laughs> We're going. That's, that's, that's yeah. hold on. I could even make more adjustments because apparently I'm cropping the top of my head off. There we go. Oh, um, right. Yeah, so, uh, folks, as you know, this is the, uh, the Dog and Pony Show. <laughs> hmm. yeah we like to think ourselves tech savvy and then comes this whole broadcasting nonsense and uh you know one of these days maybe we'll actually buy professional software uh but in the meantime then we have to use the freeware and my uh my uh, good old obs decided this morning when i logged in turned it on to revert back to who knows what and mess with my audio <laughs> so is there a is there a way to actually like save all the configuration for like you can save like a essentially export a, a copy of your configuration settings right it In saves OBS. it all my cameras are saved all you know all that but sometimes it changes the audio sources and sometimes it changes what the monitoring of them is and there's a bunch of them that you have to mm. adjust um, so it's like troubleshooting becomes just a, a nightmare. And it's like, I'll have everything written down, but there's so many different ones to check. I don't know. I'll have to go through this week and uh, figure that out. Mm. Oh, the woes of the Blockade Pinball podcast. Right, folks? That's right. It is. <laughs> really, please do all get out your teeny tiny violins and play them in unison for us at the moment. <laughs> I'll, I'll just throw it out here like this, folks. If any of you out there feel like huh, contributing to the show at all <laughs> know some things of this nature um heck if you want to be in control of the video monitoring that would relieve me from having to switch cut like that and go to that and come back to this um <laughs> let us know mm. you know we're, we're we're happy to share the uh share the fun if you want to get experience i don't know um so yeah what's going on jared Oh, well, I got a year older yesterday or the day before on Friday. Yeah, I might um, have uh, posted that onto Twitter. Yeah, I noticed that only one person gave it a like. So, <laughs> yeah, sad face. Yeah, no one cares. It's just another year. <laughs> but, yeah, overall, good. I got lots of beer and um, uh, gift vouchers so I can buy more beer uh, or gin. So, happy times. Yay! Hmm. It's a uh, it's a lovely sweltering hundred degrees here, um, which no, mm. I don't do Celsius conversions. Sorry, uh, it's about thirty five <laughs> degrees ish. We were the, this kind of popped up into a, a discussion on the Discord uh, Pinball FX three Discord channel, and uh, where all of a sudden they were blathering on about oh it's this degree Celsius outside and all that, and I just popped in. I was like, clearly you all are. Well, A, you're talking in the middle of the night, so you're not in America. And mm -hmm. B, I have no clue what any of this means because we never bothered to learn those things. And uh, yeah, that moved yeah. into then a discussion of, well, what's wrong with you people? Why did you never convert to metric? And and then it even went into that uh, people are bummed with, you know, because they select English as their gameplay uh, language and everything is in feet and inches rather than being metric. Mm -hmm. I was like, interesting. I never knew that. Uh, I always, I guess you'd have to have a UK option or a Europe option, huh? Yeah, that that's right. Yes, because you know things are different outside of the US. It's funny that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyway, that was uh, that was some fun over there. Just trying to. It's those weird differences between uh, the US and the rest of the world. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, so, as you guys might have noticed, Volume 6 is not released yet, nor do we have a release date. No, they've been very coy about it, haven't they? Uh, they have been very coy about it, um, but, and that kind of factors into some of what we're going to talk about today, which mm. is, after the release um, of what the titles were going to be, those three titles being Dr. Dude, Funhouse, Space Station, um... It was kind of what the general reaction was 
especially after having been such a long time uh, between pack five and this one. And it was kind mm. of interesting. I think you noticed it too, Jared, that there was kind of a level of disappointment because I think people thought, oh, it's been this long. We're going to get two packs announced and they're going to be license tables and they're going to be dropping three days later. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, that's what we're used to now. That's pretty much the way Zen does tables. Well, you know, it, when we say a couple of days later, it's normally, you know, three weeks later. But that's generally typical. Um, and there's been radio silence on it. There's been plenty of promotion about the tables and the different, you know, pictures of them on Twitter, etc. And all the social medias. But yeah, definitely missing that release date. Uh <laughs> And that's that's clearly frustrating people, right? Well, you know, there's radio silence and there's radio silence. So uh, I know that Geno mm-hmm. popped on with his... Uh, he does a, a stream usually every Thursday uh, of him playing some table. Um, it's European time, I think about 5 p.m.-ish. Um I think for me it's like 8 in the morning, 9 in the morning. But anyway, he had made mention that, you know, because somebody asked him that question of, you know, why don't you guys <laughs> make any, uh, you know, spit out more info? And he was kind of reiterated what we've always said, which was that we share news when we have news because we'd rather not overpromise and then underdeliver uh, because mm. that is more of a disappointment than... Uh, than anything, so it's it's better to not say anything at all, and then when there's actual news, ta da! Um, yeah. So, and exactly I think that's right. kind of what's now happening with the release date. Uh, we got to be close. There's no, I mean, we're close. We're right. close. <laughs> uh, but as to why they haven't actually put out a release date, that's that's a good question. I don't know what they're butting up against uh, on that front. Me neither. It's like they're waiting for some special point in time that we don't know of. It's maybe lining up with the consoles, maybe? What, what do you mean lining up with the uh, console? Oh, well, for console release. So yeah, they have an app. maybe there's some delay in there. Could know. be, could be, because Zen does like to do um, day and date with, with everything that they launch on. And I know mm. that uh, <laughs> Zacharia just was doing... A post about their updates uh, for the PS4, I believe, mm-hmm. and suddenly there was a delay that they weren't sure why what happened, but it pushed it four weeks. Yeah, just surprise. Ta-da! <laughs> you know, that's, so <laughs> that's got to be real frustrating, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's that portion of the reaction where people are just like, "Oh God, just give it to me already." But then mm-hmm. the other portion of the reaction that I did, like I said, despite how many times I know that I popped into various forums and was like, it's just volume six, temper your hype. Uh, people were going full bore. Oh, they're going to make a stern announcement. Oh, they're going to make, uh, you know, f- they're going to announce a next generation of, of game. They're going to... Uh, it's going to be massive. It's going to be a huge announcement. I think you're right. People were really hyping it up in their own mind, weren't they, about what this big... Like, like why have we rated for C... Uh, not CES, the CAX 2020 to, to release this news? Uh, yeah, people were, like, underwhelmed, I think. Yeah. And then to throw on top of that with the underwhelming is the factor that <laughs> well, it should have been a big deal that we finally are getting alphanumerics. Because mm, uh, it is a big deal. It is a big deal. I think to those that are DMD players, and that involves predominantly your uh, your Zen players that weren't into Williams Pinball before, uh, this is kind of like, whoa, now we're going, we're going retro, man. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And and we're getting into the boring tables because that was always the big fear that uh, uh, that these are the boring tables. They don't have modes, so they're not as exciting to to mess with and play. Um, that's right. Really, it's all about getting multiple on a lot of these tables, and that's about it. Yeah. So mm. I think that that kind of played into the kind of the oh, 
uh, fortunately, some of you recognize the fact that, hey, we finally were getting a table that was not in TPA, uh, mm -hmm. in the space station. And, and that is a big deal. That's first to digital, but commercial digital. Commercial digital, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Which is really a, what we care about, really. In this show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't touch the VPX world. The sorry, folks, it, it, that's an entirely different beast. I, I would suggest yeah. if you were really into it, hey, there's a podcast idea. <laughs> yeah, do Start it. One. Set it up. <laughs> it's, it's too much information for me to dive into and uh, keep track of. I mean, honestly, you've got so much content to talk about, and in, in the um, like the community build um, space for um pinball like simulation so you know it, go go fill your boots make a new niche niche podcast um, right about that i mean i'm yeah, still out it's... of the loop i don't even know who the the key authors of tables no. are anymore i wouldn't even know where to begin it would be like no, when i no. very first time i loaded it up and and everything was brand Started new and around with it <laughs> mm, exactly yeah I, I wouldn't know either it's it's it, it's it's a uh, it's an avenue that you know you really have to go super deep in and there's not a chance at the moment that i could go super deep into it i just don't have the time well and on top of that the vpx community has very much become all about cabinet mode um, oh yeah and so if you don't have a proper cabinet to run it and test it on then you're also doing a disservice to talking about it <laughs> mm, yeah because it's it just doesn't really they, they make the views and everything exactly for cabinet mode right yeah yeah, they're all tuned for a cabinet. So, yeah, it, it would be looking weird on just a regular screen. Well, I mean, I, it's not that they're all tuned to it. I mean, because they do present also landscape mode uh, with their builds. But I'm just mm. saying in general, the the community that is really into VBX tends to be also the same community that is really into pin cabs. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, there's a lot of... Uh, me just being able to rotate my monitor and play in cabinet mode is a whole d different subset than being able to run a true DMD, run a back glass, run uh, shaker motors and solenoids and, and all that other jazz that is programmed into into VBX. Yeah. So that's our that's our handy, helpful uh, tip for those that want to show their own. Take that. That's right. Take that. Do that. We'll, we'll even watch. <laughs> that's right. Because it'll probably be quite interesting. We'll probably learn something. Um, so yeah, do it. And yeah, we'll learn something and then we'll report on it. Um, That's so... right. <laughs> <laughs> so beyond that, if we get into the further reactions of of what is what is what, um, it turns out that Doctor Dude, go figure, <laughs> is the one that everybody kind of goes eh? about. Hmm. Yeah, that's weird. Because well, I don't think we it's know that it's the weird. most it's it's the most impressive package. And I think we know why probably people do think like that about it. And it probably has to do with their opinion of it from Pinball Arcade. Well, it's both their opinion of it from Pinball Arcade and whatever their opinion opinion of Party Zone is. Mm. Cuz it looks very similar. If you put them side by side, They've got very similar color palettes. Well, and it's the same theme. I mean, th yep. the dude is on Party Zone. He's in there. He, that's right. He is. Um, yeah. So it's and that is what was the it's essentially a trilogy of tables because wasn't there one called uh, Help Me Out, folks? What was the um, what was the first table before Doctor Dude? Uh, it's the other because there's the three party things for the ball lock. Um, Party animals? Oh, jeez. No, was that? Part... I don't know. Maybe. Because there are party animals in, you know. Yeah, um... come on, comment section. You know what table I'm talking about. You yeah, can put it in there. You know. That um... I, I haven't played it, put it that way. So I wouldn't know. It certainly didn't make it down here to Aussie land. But, uh, but yeah, so I think there's that bit of with the... Eh, it's... And even I had that opinion when I first heard it announced. And then once I started playing it, it was it was fantastic, and I was just mm. like, "Oh yeah, I remember. I do like Doctor Dude way better than Party Zone." <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a fun table. I like the the, the interesting thing about Doctor Dude is that you know your mystery awards actually modify scoring on the table, which is for its time kind of unique. Like you know, you'll get pop bumpers now with X, you know, 
and slingshots you get a little bit of extra when you hit them you know to you know take the sting out of it draining <laughs> either side of the play field where you get done by them yeah oh at least i got some more points you know that feels good <laughs> i think we mentioned it last time regarding with dr dude and just system 11s in general the idea that you need rom state carryover you uh, really do and yes we I did yeah okay and i discovered something with dr dude because mm. I put it into two-player mode, two-player hot seat. Ah, yeah. And the ROM state carried over to player two. Yes, right. And because of that, it's much easier to progress up the the dudeometer or whatever that thing yeah. is called. Um, yeah. And so at least that portion of it works. So it almost makes me think, well, if you really want to see get to the end of, of the, the dude meter... Uh, throw it into hot seat, you know, four player or whatever, and progress that way. At least that way you can get through it all. Um, so I've got a question about that because I've never really played hot seat before because there's only one of me here. Yeah. Um, the so when you play hot seat, um, do you get leaderboard status on any scores that you post? I don't know. Uh, because you you go into hot seat and you tell it what version you want to play, whether you're playing Zen, Classic Arcade, or Tournament. Mm -hmm. So you can determine those. So it's not like you're altering anything. Um, it's just like, like my question would be, how do you, um, how would you actually identify people as scorers? Which probably answers my own question. Um, you probably don't get leaderboard status for a hot seat play because how would it know which player is who because you're not all logging oh, in. Oh, right. It would always be... Mm. It would just score you, whoever the, the host... That's right. Uh, ...computer is. Yeah, that's true. That's right. It'd be local only, I would say. Right. Makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah. I think I just answered my... I just rubber-ducked it um, and <laughs> got to the answer I needed. There you go. Live problem solving, folks. That's um, right. <laughs> And then the uh, the the reaction in general for Funhouse is, oh thank God that one needed help. Um, oh, it did please send help? It was horrible. On um, yeah, it was very very. Yes, you're right. It was party animal. Chris party Saskin. animal. Thank you. Yes, party, party animal. Yeah, it was a um, definitely a. It's an oh, it's what year that's a, is that's that? A, that's a Bally machine. But is that what is that the the eighty six something chip? Uh, I don't know what they system nine. Well, no that I that think. was Bally wasn't doing system nine. That that wasn't Bally. <laughs> they they that they had merged odd. with Williams at that time. So there's that whole collection of Bally tables that that huh? is like a uh, weird science or not weird science. I wish it was weird science. Hard, um, game show. Uh, game show. But then there's those those like. There's a whole collection of oddball ballet tables that nobody talks about, and I don't even remember the titles of them. Um, but it's the uh, uh, their their chip number is like a five digit number, and it starts with eight. I know that much, uh, and that's what yeah, uh, eight five zero two or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's a certain processor type. Anyway, wow, I think that's, that I'm, I'm wondering how if that's super what nerdy is that. <laughs> <laughs> If only we had the ability to, you know, throw up pictures. Um, yeah. Well, let's not do on that. On the fly. I know. <laughs> then then there would just be an image of me doing this. Hold on, Jared. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would be scintillating. What viewing? It really would. It would be five this... minutes of it, and you'd love it. Everyone on the stream would love it. It would be great. Again, this is this is why we need a uh, a producer. Uh, engineer, a producing, a yeah. producer engineer that's... on the show that they can do all the uh... a director actually because that's what you essentially are when you're using OBS. You're a director. Yes. So you can put that on your reg on your LinkedIn, Chris. You're a director. Yeah, I know. Well, I think I already have. Um... <laughs> 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 but you know, because that person would never be on camera, they they could they could be easily doing the and nobody, all that. nobody would ever know. <laughs> that's right. It'll all be smooth sailing. Be like the duck on the surface of the water with the legs going like this. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah. uh, last but not least, Space Station. Um, I think there hasn't been much reaction to that, purely because most people have never played it. 
Yeah, that's right. I like I would have been in the same boat as well, unless except I went to this obscure little pub up the north coast and managed to find one. It would be the first time I would have played. It would have been in the um, the beta testing. I'm. And, uh, I know I have put a quarter into. It. Well, I not even a quarter because it was on free play. I know that they had it at Arcade Expo, and oh, that yeah. I did play it. But considering I played over eighty machines while it's I was there, blur. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't exactly spend a lot of time of it, and I probably went, "Oh yuck! It doesn't have uh, inlines." Yeah, moving on. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, no, nope. Because um, I can tell you exactly what row it was in. I can I can visually picture where it was because they put all their machines chronologically um, and by good. manufacturer. So very nice. Yes, uh, tells yes. A, it tells a story that way. It does. It has a narrative, implied <laughs> narrative. <laughs> which is which is kind of funny because then you get to like the stern row and it's just this bottleneck of people all down at the one end and it's no man's land at the front end. <laughs> yep. Do they have the stern slash duttery throw? Is it all like you know umbrella stern? So or is it like no. Duttery so what? Uh, how are Arcade Expo uh, organized theirs? The couple of times I've been there, stern modern stern is all in one row, but mm-hmm. then where it ends, they go into Stern Electronics. Right, yeah. Um, Data East is a couple of aisles over because um, they don't have a large collection of them, maybe 15 tables of them, mm-hmm. and that it shares the row with uh, Bally EMs, actually. Oh, interesting. Um, and then so in the miscellaneous category. <laughs> is in the miscellaneous. And I'm trying to think whether or not they did put Sega there, but I don't think they did. I think Sega was in kind of its own spot also. Because um, they basically what they kind of do is like, like the Capcom machines, because they only had a couple. They were yes. in a little corner right next to the Alvin G machines. And yeah. then they had this one pit area that was basically all the rare machines. Um, so yeah. that was where I played Alien. That was where I played um, all the spooky uh, tables, yeah. where I played the Thunderbirds table, uh, mm-hmm. where they had Houdini in that row. So it was kind of those oddball rare boutique. Boutique, boutique. yeah, exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, but the Bally Williams row, it's one side is Bally, one side is Williams. And it's the right. entire length of the uh, the warehouse. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, I mean, it, I'm telling you, it starts with, like, the Bally row starts with the Bally ultra wide bodies. Mm-hmm. And then goes all your the way, runs, all the way to the end where you got your Cactus Canyon, basically. Wow. Yeah. That, that would be quite the sight. Yes. And that's why I say the, the middle portion of that row is where all these very strange bally tables are that have yeah. oddball layouts and themes that you're like, what the heck is this? This is like gangsters and, and dames and, uh, you know, or you'll get your, your tables like, um, spectrum and vector. Oh, uh, oh yeah. You know, th- those, those kind of deals. Very experimental. Like t- they were really experimentations of the technology of the time to see what they could do with them. Um, a lot of the tables you find, like the odd ball ones, uh, the designers just and developers at the time going, what can we do with this platform? You know, this new chipset, what, what, how can we exploit it? You know, well, and then and that so was... they, they base a pinball machine around this idea they have for the hardware specs, basically. Yeah. And that was kind of, Bally was on their last legs. Um, and was trying stuff out. And so that was, that was before, right around the time because that would be mid 80s and then mm. uh, they got absorbed by uh, Williams by Williams yeah mm. so that's kind of but the, yeah you you turn your head you know 180 degrees and see the Williams aisle and it's just hit after hit after hit after hit <laughs> yeah that's right the hits just keep on coming but good luck finding a Williams table uh, pre 1980 <laughs> I mean they're there in over in the EM section, but it's like you don't care. All you want to play is the Gottliebs or the uh, the Bally's. Uh, mm, that's right EMs. of that era. Yeah, yeah of that era. absolutely. Yeah, they, they they were the the premium EMs. All the Gottliebs. 
Yes. Anyhow. Anyhow. Okay. So <laughs> now that we, boy, talk about tangents of what we didn't plan on talking about today, Jared. Um, what we just did. So there you go. You're welcome. The uh, the other thing we wanted to touch upon was, hey, how about those three quarter scale pinball cabs that mm. aren't yeah. being made by One Up Arcade? Um, oh yes, that's right. That's yes, right. Not the One Arcade. So. I could probably go because I've been hanging around on the the good old uh, uh, Toy Shock uh, fan page. It's run yes. by um, P Dubs, and uh, yeah, the um, uh, the Toy Shock folks have released um, two bits of information. So if you have an original cabinet, like a one point zero cabinet, you can get a complimentary upgrade board to one point two. Um, all you need to do is cover the shipping for it. And um, they also have a new, they also showed the new um, monitor surround for it as well. So the, um, the whole. Um, uh, the bezel. The bezel. Thank you. That's what I was looking for. So it's now a two-tone bezel um, that's been like laser coded two-tone bezel. So what they've done is they've reduced the amount of gray and put like a black in a ring on the bezel to sort of offset the screen. And it was interesting, Jeff Falk, who is the um, uh, the person who like runs Toy Shock uh, along with uh, Linda Falk, um, they, they were on the stream with um, P-Dubs and they were saying, look, you know, it was a an actual conscious decision for us to make the bezel as big as it was because this really is... I think the name of the product says it all. Toy Shock. This is actually considered a child's toy. Yeah, they're they're specifically targeting a younger market Audience. and are not mm. targeting the more hardcore. Which is is funny to say hardcore audience when you're the talking about people that one aren't. Would be. Yeah, the, when you're talking about people that aren't going to sink money into a full size virtual cab, but are looking to, to to go significantly smaller. But yeah, no, they're they're definitely they have a price point in mind, a price budget that they don't want to exceed, and yeah. uh, are almost happy to concede the you know it's like we're going to take this chunk of the audience and we'll happily yeah. concede the other chunk to the other to the other companies. Yeah, exactly right. Yep, yeah, I really did get that feeling from the live stream um, that they they ran there. It was very much they they really do know what their demo, what demographic they want to target. Um, they were really quite surprised with the um, <laughs> they were quite surprised. I remember Jeff saying he was very diplomatic about it, but he was saying, "Yeah, we were rather supply, surprised when the product was released and we had all the flipper lag issues." <laughs> like <laughs> you could tell that he was going. Uh, do WTF far side? What did you do? Um, well, and, because... and, and they were like, they were like, we didn't even <clears throat> really notice it. I'm like, well, if you don't play a lot of digital pinball, you're not going to notice it. <laughs> yeah. But no, he actually did allude to the fact that you know it felt good, like there was no lag, and then when it was released, there was lag. Oh, and I didn't catch was like, that. Yeah, he was like, uh, yeah. So what happened between the you know the the essentially the final build that we produced and loaded onto these boards versus the one that actually got released. It's like they had like three versions of the the main board and they picked the wrong version that had the better performance specs or something like that. Oh. It's That's what it sounded like to me. It sounded super dodge. Like someone picked up the wrong blueprint file basically and said, oh yeah, make that times a thousand, you know? <laughs> so uh, yeah. That, but yeah, like their bezel that's... choice itself, the idea was, look, we know we're going to have kids' hands all over this thing. Kids can be rough. Uh, they yeah. want to put a. Uh, they don't want just plexi over the top. They wanted no. a more robust piece of glass, and because of that, mm. a more robust bezel to handle was that. Required. So obviously, they weren't going for design and form factor of what will make it look like a true pinball cabinet, which they're is going what, for safety. Yeah, they're going after safety and and con- build construction uh, longevity, basically. Yeah. Which is, you know, fair enough. If you're, you know, if you're targeting that audience, you do need to be cautious about these things. Yeah, I did have um, to laugh though, that because he mentioned the accelerometer, going, oh yeah, well if we did that cost, it was going to be, you know, we just went with the button nudge rather than the accelerometer because that was going to increase the cost too much. And I'm like, I bought the accelerometer for that thing for 
twelve dollars. I assume quantity of scale would have had you buying them for a buck. <laughs> Or, like, let's be generous, like, really hardcore and say they didn't negotiate a good deal and it'll be, like, 3 or $4 max. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's not much. I think <laughs> you could have, you know, offset that in the bill of materials, right? I mean, I get putting in solenoids and stuff. Yes, that's going to add more of a cost. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, that, that, that one kind of cracked me up a little bit. Uh, it was amusing. What uh, There was one other thing, though, that they showed with... Uh, Beyond just the version 1.2 model, mm. and that was the bar top model. That's right. It's uh, a little teeny tiny. Um, it really does look teeny tiny. It's actually a 16 inch monitor, I think they said, um, with still still the um, alphanumeric displays in the back glass, but the back box is smaller, and the play field is smaller, so it's 16 inch. Um, and it's a little bar top. It doesn't have legs of any type. It just sits on your bar top and you play this thing. And the thing that made my eyes raise with this particular product is the reason why they produced it. And the reason why they produced this bar top model is that in Europe, um, they, they did market research in there and they found out that to import to export the um, uh, the full size or full size <laughs> three quarter size <laughs> product that you're seeing everyone having in the US now domestic market, they found that you know the import taxes in the European countries made it almost like a instead of like a three ninety nine product of almost like a five hundred dollar US price um, after importation, even though the dollar is strong over there like the actual euro to the the greenback is pretty much you know on par it's the import duties and stuff like that that really killed them uh, like 20 percent vat essentially is what they charge over there so that made what was the the price point and the feature points in that product really not matching up to the dollars so what they did is they made this bar top model because a lot of um they alleged that a lot of um European households aren't big, so therefore they need to, you know, make a a product that's, you know, a little bit um, more compact for the compact home. And that made me think, going, well, you know, Australia, New Zealand, everywhere outside of US is an export market. So does that mean that we aren't going to be seeing the three quarter size pinball machine because of taxes, etc.? And Toy Shock are making that decision for us rather than giving us the option to buy. And there's where I'm very curious to see what happens with 1UP. Mm. Uh, when their product does become available in Europe, how much of a price jump is it? Uh, is it do Have they found a way around it or are they under the exact same... Uh, issue constraint constraint yeah. or have they found a somebody a, a partner for i mean all the parts are coming from china for the most part anyway so it's mm. more about uh i guess what package assembly uh would it you say pretty much is so if they can import the parts into the country and then maybe manufacture it there locally and then ship it locally yeah maybe that's the way that they get around the problem but um you can assume that Arcade One Up are going to have the same challenges with VAT and tax, etc. Um, so it's going to be interesting. Like, uh, I I don't know how the I mean we got a range of Arcade One Up cabinets down here in Australia a couple of years ago. Like they came into the country and you could buy them through Aldi, I think, at the time. So they've done it before and they have released it there. So I think um, from Arcade One Up's perspective. I think other markets will actually see the product come out. That would be my my bet that I would put money behind. Um, Toy Shock, though, not sure. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm not totally certain. It's the interesting, interesting thing about well, their bar top model, though, Chris. Yeah, and this is what I was observing is that you know, if the thing doesn't have an accelerometer tilt, then there's little to no advantage actually having the thing on legs. You know that, right? Correct. Like you, you could literally just have, you could put it anywhere. You can make an upright version. You can make whatever you want. If you don't have tilt on it, you don't need it on legs. 
Yeah. So I don't know, maybe the smaller screen and the you know more compact form factor for this thing, it may be a better bet for countries outside the US. Well, I'm and I know that the sure. Arcade 1UP, they have a bar top version of Pac-Man. They're coming out with one for Miss Pac-Man. I think they had one yeah. also for uh, Space Invaders or something of that sort. Um, so they know this market as well. Mm -hmm. like they've seen mm -hmm. that there's a, a market for this as well. So... You know, it's going to be interesting to see what actually comes to the other markets. I, for one, would not be buying one of those like bar top style cabinets. Um, if I was going to do it, I would buy the form factor that makes most sense um, and actually have like the pinball, traditional pinball form factor um, if offered in our market. But um, I think, I really don't think that Toy Shock's going to be releasing that down here. I, I think that they're going to be only shipping the little bar top table down yeah. here that's my that is my call at the moment i'll see if my um my guess is correct it's in, in future months i find it interesting because i i appreciate toy shock's uh approach and hmm. they're doing the best they can for the price point that they want to hit uh with the best quality that they can and I'm like, yeah. good for you guys. That's awesome. I'm glad that you're thinking of all of that and that you're taking feedback uh, to heart and, and you know, really trying to step it up. I just feel bad that uh, the software you're saddled with. It's not, it's it's unfortunate that they went with that partner instead of, um, you know, Arcade 1UP, uh, instead of um, Zen or well, even I mean, I don't know. I don't even Zacharia. know. What the, yeah, that's, I would much rather see them go with Zacharia. Uh, I don't know. I'm that just not a, a I'm such a, not like, a fan of, of Gottlieb tables. Those particular Gottlieb tables more than anything, actually. Uh, mm. I mean, the amount of times I've ever gone, I want to play Bone Busters mm. is very Never. small. <laughs> really, really small. Yeah. Like the new, um, the other thing they previewed in the uh, stream was the um, the new cabinet art as well, and the only the only one that I would want to get they had Bone Busters at class of eighteen twelve yeah instant no for that one, um, and the only one that I would consider apart from Haunted House would be the Black Hole because there's something about the stenciled look of Black Hole that appeals to me more than just the eighties garish like color vomit. That is Bone Busters or Class of eighteen twelve art. It's, well, and they, they just to, look horrible. Yeah, on they the they seem to indicate that Black Hole for sure is going to be available. The other cabinet art is going to be more of a how many requests do we have for it? Mm. Because in order for us to do a run on that artwork, uh, we need. X amount of people that we know that are going to go for it. So I think even they realize that those are uh, mm. obviously not going to be as popular as what Black Hole would be. It's interesting. In talking about the whole artwork scenario, the um, the way that they do the art on those cabinets is is not just a, like a, a sticker or a plique. It's actually like printed onto the wood, essentially. Yeah. So it's not, it's not a sticker. It's actually like bonded to the wood, like almost like a paint, essentially. So I'd imagine it'd be like screen printed on, mm -hmm. you know. So that does, you know, there is a, a definite bill of materials costs associated with that. And you're right, there is definitely a, a, a how many units minimum do we need to make this a viable product line. Um, so, yeah, I think they made the right choice going with Black Hole, <laughs> personally. I do wonder how many people, though, are going to take that cab and modify it. Uh, the black hole cab. Black hole or even the, the haunted house cab. Just from the standpoint of there's no DMD. You've just got the alphanumerics. Uh, mm. And the fact that... The... Whether people will want to go with that form factor of buttons or not. Because that might be an advantageous having the two buttons on both sides because you can remap what the nudge button does. Um, so mm. I don't know. I'm, I'm just curious to know how... It, and obviously Toy Shock could care less about the mod community because that's not what they're selling it for. They're selling No, it. they're really not. <laughs> that's not a factor. Um, I've already seen someone put a um, digital back glass in. 
like they've people have gone down that route already with them and turned them into like a mini pin cab um so yeah there's there's already prior art there for that but you know i think the form factor is the thing that appeals to people because yeah. you know toy shock do have a valid point in that there are households out there that just don't have the space the floor space for these like i'm even struggling with you know doing up force two and my pink panthers on its end in my garage because i just don't have room to assemble both at the same time like they're they're hulking beast pinball machines mm -hmm. right they take up a lot of floor space so yeah they've they made a good like the whole three-quarter range is smart smart business really like the more you think about it yeah we did get a preview of mel kirk coo of zen tweeted out a pick that he had assembled a marvel pinball arcade one-up cab at his home mm. so we know that they're a real thing he did say that artwork's not final um you know it's still uh, well, what did you call it jared a uh production test run yeah i think yeah it was a production what were the production samples um, production sample there you go yeah I, um, it seemed like one of the production samples um that he'd set up in in the house i mean it looked good um, but it does um, look good. I got a now. better look though at just how small that 24 inch screen is going to be because it's, there's a lot of lower area. That lower, the, the full lower area, the lower apron is just yeah. a black, big black bar. For that could really do with some on. art on it. I, I really hope they do something with that area, like put some art on it or some Zen branding or something down there, or even make it look like an apron. Like, that yeah, but then you would wind up cool. having a double apron. Because yeah. then there's the apron that would be on the play field itself, too. Like a double rainbow. <laughs> what does it mean? <laughs> what does it mean, man? Double <laughs> rainbow. Wow. Um, yeah, but the, the angle that he took the picture, I just kind of went, oh, boy, that screen is going to be rather small. <laughs> yeah. Within the scale of the cabinet, like it's almost like they should have just moved the, the screen down more and had the top area as a void. I don't yeah. know. Or maybe like like middle roaded it or something like that. It just feels really, it feels really top loaded on on the cabinet. There's where I wish that there would be the option of oh, you want a larger screen? Here, you can buy it from us and <laughs> put it in there. Um, yeah, just because you know that people are going to swap that thing out. You just oh, they will. It. Yeah, it's going to be probably one of the first things the modding community look at. Um, which, which again, and here we go with our third cabinet option. If you're really going for that, if you're going to mod it because you want to be able to play all your pinball and have a larger screen and do all these things, well, you might as well just forego doing it on the one-up cabinet and go the at-games route, except for the fact that we still know next to nothing about it. It's uh, Talk about radio silence. Yeah, that company. No idea. They, they just do the shadow rendering. They don't even have a, a render of what they want their cab to look like. It's just a silhouette. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're taking some cues from Arcuda. Oh, are they ever taking cues from Arcuda? <laughs> <laughs> don't say anything because people might steal what we're doing. <clears throat> oh. Yeah. <clears throat> but that is still the... This is why I wish they would put something out. They'd put forth a true render because... If you're going to that, steal any of the marketplace, you need to say what you're going to do so that people uh, know. So the people from rather, a bone. Yeah, ra yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, rather than people geez. going, "Oh, I'm going to buy the one up," and then they're going to get mad because, "Oh, I should have. I wish I had stayed, you know, away and done the uh, games one." You could steal the thunder and be like, "Boom! This is what we're putting out," and and it's coming in this month. Like that's all I need to do. Show the product. People can derive a lot of information from a even a render. Like, look what uh, Arcade One Up did when they first announced the tables. They're all renders, and you know, even some of their you know the shots with um, the the pinball machine, you know, allegedly in a home. You know, that was absolutely a render. That one it was a very good render, but it was still a render. So stuff like that, like get your product out there so people can see the thing. Like, I don't, I just don't get there. That's another one that I just like roll my eyes at and 
because it's because I mean that's what Toy Shock is doing. Toy Shock got their they got their product to market. They're first, shipping products and they're shipping product right now. Yes, because there's going to be that desire of people wanting these things, and to the less informed, you know, to the grandparents, they're gonna be like, "Oh, little Timmy, he wanted a virtual pinball machine. And I saw one at Walmart, so I bought it." And you don't have no clue that there's gonna be a difference. No, and the thing is, little Timmy will probably go, "Hell yeah, this is awesome." Because <laughs> older Timmy is gonna go, "Oh God, Grandma, give me the receipt." <laughs> yeah, older Timmy's gonna go, "No." <laughs> yeah. Oh, look, older older Timmy will be going, well, look, at least it's not one of those Zizzle pinball machines. Oh, my you God. Know? <laughs> yeah. So there's that. Um, look, it's, it's, look, it's better to have 12 sort of questionable Gottlieb tables than no Gottlieb tables at all. So good, I guess. Like, you know, you wouldn't be, you wouldn't be like bummed if it was under your tree in um in christmas time like it's it's not terrible let's be honest like it's still you get a pinball machine you can play games on it and with the 1.2 board it's not going to suck because it'll actually be at i think the the interesting thing from a specs perspective is it's it's not only the, they fix the high score issues not saving which how would that get through qa initially like i just don't understand um and uh they're also going to fix the um the I think the frame rate. It sounds like they've actually done something to clock it in at 60. I don't know how they've done it, but they have. Um, so it sounds like it's going to be the 1.2 boards. And we'll see this because p is going to like upgrade his machine any day now if he hasn't already. Um, so we'll see what the performance is like. He's going to be doing the good before and after you know, stuff on it. So we're, we're going to see what it's like. And you know, maybe 1.2 will be the turning point with this product. It'll actually become like yeah maybe not or you know by the way to yeah you know if you know what you're getting into go and get it you know yeah and and that's just what i'm saying it's as long as there's not so much of a buyer beware uh you know and and that's what i feel like the ad games one right now is where it's you're crossing your fingers for something that you don't know the specs of um that you don't even know you don't know what the reality of is yeah yeah, that's the thing. You don't you, know, you don't know what it looks like. The website's like suspiciously suspiciously quiet about it. And all you can go by is what they leaked through P Dub's channel on a spreadsheet. So yeah, I, I wouldn't make a decision based on that. Like you can't. You almost have to make your decision off of their other products. Yeah, which, you know, from what I've seen are actually pretty good. Yeah. You know, their um, Arcade Legends cabinet seemed pretty good. Um, but yeah, you know, like pinball is an unknown quantity for them. So you, you, you really got to see the thing, you know. And this is where Toy Shock and Arcade One Up are ahead because they, you know, they're showing this thing off so you can see it. And, you know, Toy Shock, you can buy it. And, you know, the. As we both know with product, the best thing you can do is have real customer testimonials talking about your product because that sells product. Um, well, and interestingly enough, they're, uh, again, competitor to uh, to at games, uh, not the pinball front, but the arcade cabinet front. There's a couple of Kickstarters going on uh, with different mm. companies doing cabinet. One particular company is doing uh i can't remember the name of the uh didn't plan for this talk either otherwise i had to have it down it's, it's mm. the r something uh anyway r type uh, i want to say r type but that's i don't think that's what it is but anyway they're doing a a small form arcade cab that can be either you can either buy it just as a bar top or buy it as full riser so that it's a uh, regular standard height um, but it's going to have its own store within it to officially oh. buy uh, games. Now, oh, okay, so it's II Arcade. There it Immersive is. Immersive Arcade Gaming Reinvented. Now, their big commercial games that they have licensed are Dragon Slayer, which that's a huge one because you that's can't massive. do it in MAME. You can't. No, you can't. Um, it's so, all laser-disc based. Yes. And it's uh, fragile because it's laser-disc based. Yeah. 
So <laughs> they, they're doing that. And then uh, Double Dragon, I think, is the other one that I recognized, at least the, the title of. Everything else, I was like, eh, you got a problem because Arcade 1-Up probably already locked all the licenses up for, <laughs> yeah. for anything Namco, Tato. Uh, well, Sega's still out there, but good luck getting that. That Dragon's Lair game is an odd one. It's very, it's it's niche popular because it's it's hard to find. But like, it's, in speaking to someone who's actually put money through it and played it, it's it's you've got to know exactly when to press the buttons at the right time. Like, it's <sighs> actually it's staged. As it's the a, way you it's need a, to play. it is the original quick time game. Yeah, it is totally. Yeah, and it but, is you know, brutal because the amount of time you have to actually do that t- quick time movement. And register what's going on. Yeah, it eats through your quarters because you just die and die and die and die, and it's only through experimentation that you get past the next quick time event. And that was kind of the point of it <laughs> to eat yep. all your quarters with. Exactly. I'm reading through the the Kickstarter page now, and it's um, it looks like uh, you shouldn't bother looking at it unless you're in uh, the USA, Canada, or South Korea. Um, Because that's where they're shipping it, according to what I was seeing here. But uh, yeah, so this is uh, this is this is the reality. There's all of a sudden this market has popped up, and Mm -hmm. many people are seeing the potential and are trying and are starting to dive in. And Mm -hmm. as we keep on saying in various manners, competition is good because it forces the hand of everybody to up their game. uh, That's right. Without increasing the price. Mm-hmm. So, what is happening with this thing is going to affect what happens with future arcade one-up cabs. I mean, arcade one-up has already improved their monitors, uh, apparently, yes. from what they initially started with. And at games is obviously uh, going for larger monitors, but in the same package uh, size, you know, and obviously with more controller options and stuff. So. Yeah, this stuff is going to start proliferating and, and exploding, I think, in this next year. Um, yeah, we're going to see a lot of options come into the market, I think, because people are waking up and realizing that it's actually a thing. And I, I think I the, like same the, thing the, happen, the same thing is going to happen then with the uh, pinball cabs, I believe. Oh, yeah. There's going to be heaps of companies coming out with the idea of it. And you can... I, I just hope that what I don't see is a whole lot of people trying to install freeware on it and trying to sell that as a thing. So, you know, installing all the MAME stuff on there and then trying to sell a product with that embedded on there. Because, you know, that's what a lot of the manufacturers here, like in Australia, are doing. They they will build you a machine and it will magically come preloaded with 200 or 300 pinball tables that are all open source (laughs) community tables, not licensed on a product that's being sold in retail, which is against the licensing terms of that product. So... Uh, yeah, dodgy. And this is what, you know, this is what uh, John Dynamon was talking about. Um, um, The fact that the market isn't level in that regard. Like, people just do what they want and try and sell it as a thing. So, Which makes it more difficult for the legit companies to secure licensing because those companies are gun-shy about having their product then somehow magically make it onto these other things. (laughs) yeah that's right and that's what they don't want like you know they've spent the time in engineering dollars making this product and then it just like gets put on some chinese knockoff like yeah you know, yeah please, please see yakuda unfortunately <laughs> yeah because that is essentially what happened to them and it's shit but it, it is what it is you know so there we are folks there's the current state of things with uh yeah the the current state is once again plateaued <laughs> Yeah, so you know, we we just need to wait for for Zen to you know announce the release date, and you have to assume it's going to be soon. Like they they wouldn't just sit on this forever. Now they've announced it, it doesn't make sense for them to do it. So I think our our synopsis is they're just waiting for all the platforms to line up, and once they're all lined up, they'll probably release the thing. Yeah, because I, I, I think I had said. My guess was going to be near the end of July. I think your guess, or excuse me, near the end of August. And I think your guess was beginning of September, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah, yeah something like that. Yeah. So it should yeah, be. It feels, it feels like September to me, I think, at this stage. 
Um, but we'll, we'll see. Like, either way, we know it exists. It's a thing now. Everyone knows of it. It's public knowledge. So they're going to release the thing. You know. And again, as both of us have played the beta, we can tell you marked improvement over what previously was available. Yeah, those three tables are like, you wouldn't even recognize them from a gameplay perspective. It's funny, you know, I've been on the subject of gameplay perspective. I've been um, you know, in the um, uh, Toy Shock chat and there's people in there talking about, oh, you know, I really just wish that, you know, Farsight kept the um, the license and they were able to continue doing things because, you know, they, their games play really well and it got me thinking going, hmm. And I thought, no, I'm going to just ask the question here. And, you know, I, they say, you know, one of the great, the classic things is I don't like all the pop-up scores and the animations. I say, well, you can turn it off, right? And some people don't know that still. Oh, yeah. That you can turn off those things, which is really surprising. Um, and I think we actually, I think I might have won over another customer to Zen. Now they know they can turn that off. So I'll, I'll get that internet dollar. Thank you very much. That uh, <laughs> the virtual internet dollars <laughs> coming my way for that. Um so, you know, they were talking about, you know, the fact that, you know, Zen's physics are just no good and, you know, Farsight's physics were you know, are, are much better and stuff like that. And, you know, I, I just went, okay, mm, nice, good, good opinion there. Just left that one <laughs> on, the, on the card. You know I what responded, I'm... I, I responded initially going, eh, like, you know, like, okay, if you can look past all the railroads and, um, you know, questionable physics when the ball leaves the play field, sure, Farsight's physics are much better. Um, but, and then, you know, if I could see it going down, going down the rabbit hole. And I thought, no, I'm just going to step back here. I'm not going to win this argument, nor do I really care. <laughs> so, yeah, I think the, I just went, nope. Because I don't think, I, as far as I know, Farsight still very much has the Gottlieb license. It's it's theirs to say we're done with it. Um, it's not going to get pulled from them. From what from what my understanding of their licensing agreement was, but they're also not going to make new tables because they don't feel that there was any interesting tables left to do. So I think the only way you're going to see new Gottlieb's is if those people that bought the Toy Shock product demanded from Toy Shock that hey we want more Gottlieb tables, mm. and then. Toy Shock actually contract commissioned Farsight to do it. Mm-hmm. Mm, that's you're I right. think the only way that that's going to happen. Farsight's, I think you're dead on. You're dead on the money there. Like um, Farsight will need basically a sign check to actually start development again because to them it's a risk. But if they have someone paying the bills, that they are essentially a contract studio. Now that's what they do. Like they're making all the Brunswick. They got Brunswick Pool, Brunswick Pro Bowling. Yeah, that's all. You know with probably some money floating around there to make it worth her while as a development studio. So if someone pays them, they'll do it. And um, or they'll do whatever, really. Like they'll they'll produce whatever they can get their hands on, really, if someone pays them the money, which is, you know, good business, let's be honest. You know, producing something you have a guaranteed like revenue stream for, yeah, that's a logical choice. <laughs> but Not only that, but if you're doing the EMs, having the physical machine in your office is no longer such an important factor. Um, no. I mean, they proved that just with their Pinball Hall of Fame Gottlieb collection. Oh, they did all that with scripting. Yeah, yeah. it was all yeah, all scripted up. I mean, the logic of those things is it's very predictable. As long as you know what triggers what and when it triggers, you can totally script that. Like, you don't need, a, you don't need to emulate or do anything because, well, you can't emulate it because it's an EM. Um, and in terms of tuning the physics... Well, they weren't exactly tuning the physics of the EM to actually play like an EM to begin with. No so, way. And if your fan base doesn't care, then voila. Voila, you've got yourself a market that's like great. Like you can sort of do what you want. Yeah. And uh, yeah. There, were, there was a discussion also going on, and, and I kind of find this interesting. Uh, there are some players that do not like the new physics uh, that came with the Monster Pack and with Volume 5, because they feel that the ball suddenly slowed down. Hmm. Interestingly enough, myself, uh, Spacey's Arcade, Greg, over there, like Hmm. the new physics, because we feel that it more closely resembles what the actual table, um, a real-life table play is like. And so I kind of posed the question, I'm like, and for the people that were complaining about it, and I said, 
what's your experience with real world table play? Because um, mm-hmm. I knew I knew a couple of the people have never actually gotten their hands because of where they live. They've never had a chance to play on a real machine. So that means all of their experience is based off of either playing previous versions, so somebody else's interpretation of physics, or watching videos, uh, typically the Papa videos, (laughs) which are, again, you're dealing with not only different table settings than what a table was designed for, but the skill of the player playing it is making certain things, ball behaviors look like they're natural when they're anything but. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. And the response came back pretty much with what I, what I thought, where it was like, no, I don't have much experience with, with these particular tables. Um, I just know that for me, the challenge went down with the monster pack in volume five. And I was like, okay, that's fair enough. Hmm. But just because you happen to, you know, it's one of the top online players or digital pinball players is the Tarek Overdirk. Over, or I can never remember. Yeah. Um, the guy can dominate any digital pinball machine, and he's also apparently really good at real machines. Right. <laughs> you know, and that's not who you. They're always going to find the exploit of a table, and always going to, you know, I I watched a guy at one of my uh, when I was in the league, and he was I think at the time ranked thirty third in the world. Uh, mm-hmm. I watched him run Indiana Jones. Completely mm, yeah. run the table. He And then I watched him play uh, Game of Thrones, and he was literally on one ball for 20 minutes. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's not natural. That's not, <laughs> you know. That, so if you have that kind of... That's not what operator wants. <laughs> no, 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 no. So, I mean, if you have that kind of skill, of course you're going to want something that's even more severe. But my standpoint is that at least even with the first three volumes, which don't have the good flipper physics and Mm. might have a little, uh, or also have what Greg termed was the marble ball effect, which is the ball speed is accelerates in ways that are unnatural. uh, That the Mm, eye can't possibly follow. And, I was able to compare again at Arcade Expo. They had every single machine that Zen had put out. And my thing was what Zen had nailed was at least uh, the wild ball play and a lot of the angles that you have to shoot the ball at. Mm -hmm. Um, And gone were the railroads, obviously. Yeah. But then when we get this, these newer packs, it's, it feels more real to me even if the ball mm. apparently is slower and I'm not really people keep on pointing to Circus Voltaire and I'm like Circus Voltaire is a floaty table that's how it, it was actually designed. really is it's designed for the ball to go side to side not up and down it, yeah it's a it is very much a, a floaty table it took me by surprise when I played it properly set up at somebody's home it's like wow this thing just floats around it's like the ball is on slow motion but it's how they want it to play. Well, like, and, and I also point out things like, look, go back and play play any Steve Ritchie table. They're going to play lightning fast compared yeah. to, uh, and I don't even know what designer you know to compare it to, but you know, go play F14, which is a System 11 machine, and it plays just as fast as any modern Stern. It does. But then go play something like Earthshaker, which came out around the same time, and it plays miles slower uh, yeah. than that. So a lot depends on also the the designer and how shots were set up, what kind of speed you can expect out of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and so it's not that Zen is not raking the table up high enough. I guarantee that their program has all the tables set at the 6.5 degree rake. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm pretty positive of that. And then... <laughs> Here's something to consider when you go into now with these alphanumerics. I don't know that 6.5 was the standard rake. I think it was actually only 6, maybe even 5.5. Yeah. It was much flatter. It was much elevens. flatter. Yeah. So that's something that you're going to have to adjust to and realize that it's not because they're not doing it correctly. They're matching what 
these tables behave like. Yeah. Uh, so the rake was the rake was different because the flipper strength was different. So that's when you adjust the rake of a table. It's when the flippers are stronger or weaker. That's why all the older style um, EMs and early solid states they float because the flippers were not strong back then. No, they don't go whipping the balls around at all. They don't. No, they don't. <laughs> Uh, so that's where it's, it's when we talk physics, I always now kind of want to know what what is your experience in the real world on these things and how do you feel? Because, and I point everybody to Greg's video. I'm like, watch what happens when he put a marble on the table. That hmm. told the story. And it was enough of a telling of the story that Zen went, oh, and adjusted things because, accordingly. <laughs> hmm. But that, that's right. Like, yeah, I don't know. The, the the physics scenes will always be a point of contention because everybody's experience is different. But as we've said in the past in the show, it's, uh, you know, it is based on the tables that Zen have in their studio. And that is the standard that you're playing. So unless you can go to Budapest and go and play those tables and then compare notes, just believe that it's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, the, the tables were designed to be within a parameter of play, but mm. the specifics of each table is obviously going to be varying uh, different to different. And I need, I even came across this when I was playing on somebody's uh, Revenge for Mars table, that any time the ball went into the scoop, you had to nudge, a, time your nudge, so that as soon as the ball was ejecting it, you could nudge it to hit it, because otherwise it was going to fire straight down the middle. And the owner of the table... Uh, happened to be watching and we complained we're like dude your table it fires straight down the middle every time he's like oh let me take a look at that so he mm. popped open the play field and went underneath and realized that the the scoop shoot had been loosened a little bit so he yep. lined it back up tightened it ta-da that's all it Fixed. took it, it was literally just a slight a couple of screw screw. turns yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, you know it and that was all the dip. But I mean, how many times have I played Metallica where the snake uh, eject is vicious? I mean, it, it's again, oh, yeah. it can be a straight down the middle shot or it can graze your flipper. Uh, so there's there's tolerances that are allowed uh, machine to machine. Oh, absolutely. But it's, it's the broad strokes that Zen is nailing. It's maybe the mm. fine tuning that is where it becomes whatever table that you're used to playing. So. Yeah, that's right. It's the plus minus ten percent of your own experience. <laughs> mm. They should just have that warning across. Just your experience may differ from your reality. I don't know. Yeah, but I think that there's right. where your toy shock uh, community—they're uh, going to get used to the Gottlieb physics that Farsight has presented, and they're going to come to accept those. And I accepted them when. Pinball Arcade was our only choice. I didn't have much mm. of a problem with the physics until I played Zen's version and went, oh, oh, I've been wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the Farsight's physics were not terrible. The bad part of it was that they were predictable. Um, but they did do a fairly good job of especially when you compare it to previous uh, pinball games, other than everybody always brings up pro pinball. I never played pro pinball, so I can't really comment on that one. But everything else that I had ever played was always exceedingly unnatural in feel. And mm. I always felt Farsight felt more, much more natural, and I completely accepted it for the eight years that I was playing it. Uh, <laughs> and then, like I said, you know, it's it's... You think you've had, you know, a good pizza, and then you find out that you've just been eating Mama Celeste, and all of a sudden you have a real pizza from a real pizzeria, and you go, oh. <laughs> oh, that's what it's supposed to be like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, different flavors. All mm -hmm. right. We're going to call it at that. Uh, you can expect to hear from us in two weeks. Presumably and Hopefully we'll have a date announcer. for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Presumably with an announce or a, a release date. Yeah. Um, but that's when to look for us next, two weeks from now. And I don't think that we're, other than the release date, I don't think there's much that we're really looking out for. 
because I don't think we're going to be seeing any new news about the cabinets, even from Toy Shock, until September proper. Oh yeah, I I think so. Like uh, I think they they're going to be ramping up from September quite aggressively. But I think um, yeah, I I don't think we're going to expect anything from August and at all. Um, yeah, it's going to be towards the latter half of the year, I think, or the latter quarter of the year, really, isn't it? Yeah, something like that. So, mm. anyway, that's uh, that's the uh, good lord. I just heard a giant explosion outside. Oh, fireworks! Um, fireworks! <laughs> kaboom! Yeah, why not? <laughs> Fire the hole. So long as it, so long as it's not a power transformer, because um, in this heat, it, those can go too. Uh, oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, oh, <laughs> over in the uh, the peanut gallery, it's uh, speculation of what to expect from Zen for the rest of the year. Stuff and things. Stuff, wait, that's what comes from our show, not from Zen. <laughs> 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 yeah, I. I don't know. We can we can maybe uh, we can maybe delve into that. It's yeah. possible. Eh. Throw some ideas out there of what. Uh, More tables. That's. I, I mean, literally, that's <laughs> what our speculation is going to be. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'll give you all a nugget to to kind of chew on, because I just read this article before we uh, started today. Yeah, you might have heard that makers of Fortnite Epic have had their game yanked off of Apple and Google Play because yes. they instituted in-app purchasing that skipped Apple and Google completely, so that the funds went directly to Epic. Yes. Then Epic announced that part of the reason for doing this is because Apple charges a 30% commission right off the top of any sale. They do, yes. Whereas the Epic Game Store only charges 12% uh, for theirs. Right. So there's something to consider for all of you that are... Because uh, I've read rampant speculation about this, too, of... Because the other three games that Zen has put out, being Castle Storm 2, Operencia, and Dreadnoughts, those all went directly to Epic Game Store for uh, limited time exclusivity, that they're mm. fearful that if there is a new iteration of Pinball FX, that it might also go Epic Game Store exclusive. And if you're wondering then why <laughs> that might be a possibility, that's probably a pretty good reason. Uh, a commission cut seems to be a pretty good motivation to, you know, maybe go epic first. Oh, to, to at least, come on. Right, to at least kind of get the initial wave of people that want to play, get all that, and then, yes, obviously, if you're a console player, you can't go to Epic Game Store. You're going to have to wait for it to come to console but yeah. when i heard that cost i was like holy crap so if you're That's paying big hit if you're paying 30 percent to the store and, and i'd be curious to know what steam's cut is i don't think steam's is that large i don't Do you? know i don't know no. but but if it's 30 percent to that well, what's the cut to say uh scientific games for the williams license that they're having to pay oh it, it'd be oh well I don't know. I, I don't either. It's hard I'm, to say. It's I'm, really I, hard to tell. Honestly, I'm guessing it's probably like a 20% cut. Uh, so right there, you're now 50% of your profits are gone. Mm -hmm. And then if you slap on a license... <laughs> then there's more. You've got this little tiny bit of money left that had to go into your game development <laughs> and that yeah. you're now recouping the costs on. So i'm saying if you, if you can save 20 percent of one of those you know commissions that you have to pay then you you, you do it and i'm saying know? that with the idea of we've got all those licensed dmds that have not been made yet well yes that's right <laughs> that that would make it easier for the studio to afford to the extra costs and licenses that would go along with those particular games, wouldn't it? Yeah. So I'm just going to throw that into the 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 fire for those that uh, <laughs> are having panic over this of of what and and wondering why what the logic would be for doing that. Um, we keep on saying these are businesses that are meant to make money. 
and they need to make money in order to further put out product. That seems like a pretty valid reason, I would think. So the article linked in the show notes is it's a 30% cut on average um, through Steam. Uh, so it's similar. Um, so if you look at Steam versus Epic, there's money to be saved. Yeah. Wow. Mm. We'll see, though. Who knows? I think uh, the big question for me has keeps on continuing to be what is the... Uh, PS5 and Xbox X or whatever it is that they're calling it. I'm never going to know because I'm not an Xbox fan. Um, yeah. But what is what is going to happen to those? Uh, mm. If it's just a straight port of FX3, that answers a lot of questions. If it's something different, that opens up a whole can of worms. Uh, yeah, exactly. The likes of which maybe that's where next episode we can speculate. So... Maybe, yeah. maybe I don't know. We'll see with uh, we'll see how much me and Jared can go behind the scenes and, and kind of go. How, how long can we stretch this little uh, tangent? <laughs> That's right. We are good at it, so you know we uh, we 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 are experts at that little caper. Yes. So yes. all right. Uh, so yeah. Until next time, folks. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time, Jared. Give your out. Uh, next time there's going to be stuff and things so stay tuned stuff and things folks that's what we're all about stuff and things bye 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 <laughs>